Hey, glad y'all here. Today, we're going to check in a little bit and then talk about what I ate the past two days on my low carb barbarian. <laughs> I know people, people that didn't see that video probably think, what is that crazy woman talking about? It is my low carb Mediterranean hybrid. I just kind of put them together and it's interesting, but it's pretty much a, a balanced way to eat, you know, anyway. Let me just tell you, Sebastian's down, right? I finally got to see him Thursday. He, he spent the day with me. He spent the night, and then he went back home. Well, Thursday was his birthday, so we had a birthday party for him. And um, but I'll tell you what I ate on that. I still did good, I think, for a birthday party. He turned four. But he comes in the door. He walks over to the tree. He looks. He stands there. Now, he just turned four. Last year, he had just turned three, He like less than a week before Christmas. So in all, um, for all intents and purposes, he was two years old when he remembered this. And he goes, there's supposed to be vehicles on that tree. <laughs> Looking at RJ, and RJ's like, he remembers that? Because last year, I decorated the whole tree special for him in these little um, Hallmark ornaments that are from movies, a lot of Disney movies. And the vehicles from Cars were on there, and some other ones were on there. And so I had put them all down at his level so he could see them, because those are movies and videos and whatnot that he knows. So he remembered from a year ago that there were supposed to be vehicles. That's what he calls them, vehicles. He don't call them cars. Everything is a vehicle. On that tree, I'm like, well, no, honey, not this year. I changed it up. He goes, what kind of tree is this? <laughs> I said, well, they call this one Tinseltown. He was fine with it, but he, he just, you know, what did he do? As soon as he cleared up the tree situation, he reached out and grabbed up a package. I'm like, little man, you don't know if that's yours. You better put that back, which it was his. Everything with the exception of a handful was all his. So he put it back. I said, we're going to have a birthday party first, and then we'll open up some birthday presents. So he, okay. He's listening so much better this month than the month before he was here. He was here, then it was a month, and then he's back. He's um kind of growing into a more um, docile, <laughs> should I say a docile child. He was not near as wound up. Or um, getting as um, irritated at things. So that, it was very nice. But what I did was, Holly couldn't come because she had to work. But um, RJ and his girlfriend come. And David, he was home. He would have been home, but he would have had to go to bed um, earlier. But he was up from taking me up yonder. And um, so I ordered some pizza from Pizza Hut and got one of their chocolate chip cookies. Oh, my God. Those things, those things are so good. Those brownies that they make, those Hershey brownies are off the hook, too. They're terribly chocolatey. If you ever get a chocolate fix, they are so not diet friendly. But I'm going to tell you what, they are chocolate friendly. So I got that and a, a drink for them. So we sat down, we had his little party, and then we went over there to open presents. Well, trying to make him understand, you know, they were wrapped in Christmas paper, but I, I was trying to make him understand these are birthday presents. He knows that there's a birthday, and he knows there's Christmas, but I don't know how much of it he knows is the same or separated or whatever. So I kept trying to make sure he knew this is birthday presents. Well, he ripped up, just started going at it. He would look at something, he would throw it down, and he would go, <laughs> go to the next one. Then he got to his first Transformer. This kid is eat up with Transformers. Rescue bots. He got to, we got him three. He got to the first one. Oh, then he took it over to his daddy wanting to see his Transformer. And he wasn't trying to look at no more presents. And then we had to tell him, well, there's some more stuff under there. So he eventually got around to all three Transformers. And when he got all three Transformers, he was done. He was literally done. He had more because I wrapped a, bu a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I, wrapped, I, I spent, I told David, we just blew all our money except for on those three Transformers because that's pretty much all he cared about. Well, they got them 
one of them had some little things to put together, but they had to teach him how to do them. We got the the kind, it's the rescue bots, which is like the chunkier, clunkier um, Transformers. It's not those little intricate kind that the older kids can play with. These are um, toddler um, appropriate. So they taught him how to transform it. In case you don't know, Transformers goes from a vehicle to a robot. So he learned how to do that. And I'm going to tell you what. He spent the night with me. All day long, he played with his Transformers. He did not, I'm not telling you a, an exaggerated story. He did not play with one other toy except those three Transformers. When he went to bed, one of them, he got a heat wave, which is his favorite. That's a fire truck. He got a bumblebee, which is his second favorite, I think. I'm not sure. I think because it was bigger than Optimus Prime. Bumblebee is like a, a sports car looking thing. He's yellow. Heat wave's red, obviously. And Optimus Prime, he's red and blue. He's a big rig. He, he was smaller. We couldn't find a, a big one in him, so he, he was a little bit smaller. Still for toddlers. He went to bed and slept with heat wave and bumblebee. <laughs> and the next day, he, I told him, cause sometimes things kind of travel to his daddy's house and never travel back to Momo's house. <laughs> so I'm like, you can take one. And David got him a remote control, big old remote control car. I let him take that cause him and his daddy can play with that. And, um, I said, take one transformer. And of course he took heat wave. That was his favorite. <laughs> but anyway, he was standing there. Um, those little, now I lie, he did for a, a, a split second play with these little jumpers. I got them from the Dollar Tree. There was like four different ones. I got him two. You wind them up and then they bounce and their mouths kind of go like that and they're just like egg shaped kind of. Well, within a minute, the penguin was broke and then they just barely, the more you wind them, the less they jump, the less they jump. So anyway, he was standing there messing with that at my little side table. And I just reached up and just kind of did his little neck like that. And he, he did like that. And he giggled. And then, you know, I did it some more. And he giggled. And then I just went. I, I wasn't hard tickling him. I was just touching him, right? He deadpan turns over and looks at me and goes, Could you please stop that? <laughs> I said, Yes, I can. <laughs> he is... Who grown for his own good? When he talks to you, I'm going to tell you. Well, I didn't mean to slurp that. He doesn't talk to you. He speaks to you. <laughs> He's a funny, funny kid. Anyway, I was just telling y'all that. Y'all here to hear what I had to eat. But we had a good time. And then he went on to his daddy's. I'm not sure when he's coming back. Um, RJ goes back to work or whatever. I don't, I don't even know what our... Um, plans are. I do know today I'm prepping. Since it's Christmas I'm going to prep today so I'll have something to eat um, during this week because i got something to make every single day. And I am going to film several things. I'm not promising when they're going to be up. Several of you have wanted to see David's Coconut Cake. Now let me warn you. I'll warn you on the video too. There's nothing diet friendly about it. Not one single solitary thing. It is not calorie friendly it is not point friendly it is not carb friendly it is not hip friendly it is not belly friendly except for the kind when you eat and taste it real good <laughs> so it is a special occasion treat and you know what life is full of special occasions i have told y'all before and i will continue to tell you my life does not revolve around weight watchers my life does not revolve around points and calories and carbs it's a big part of it because I'm trying to lose weight, but it is not what consumes me 24 hours a day. There is more to life than that. So part of that is David's coconut cake. And y'all knew as soon as he said that he was going to get it, y'all knew he was going to get that cake. He did not. He really did. He's not one of those that would say something and mean it as a hint. He, he's just not, he don't have that <laughs> He don't have that much um, forethought. And I'm not saying that in an ugly way. I'm just saying he just doesn't. He, he doesn't think like that. But as soon as he said it, he was going to get that cake. So I was going to um, film that. And um, the chicken, it's a brand new recipe. But it sounded really good because it's Carolina style. And the mustard base is down from the coast. 
um, that's the the style that they have at the coast um, here if I get it correctly in the Piedmont which is the center is the vinegar based and then the mountains the west is the thick um, sugary base I think I got that in the right order but there's three distinct um, I should know that having lived here my whole life three distinct areas and styles of barbecue so this one's going to be the mustard based and I hope it's as good as it sounds so I was going to film that and then somebody want to see the broccoli and cheese soup it's um, just going to be low carb it, it was I don't know what size of serving it was going to be, but if I remember correctly, it was like seven points and seven carbs. So I don't think that's bad considering it's going to have half and half in it, you know. So that, that's a new recipe too. I made one before and David really liked it and then I can't remember how I made it. So I found this new recipe to try. Hopefully it'll be just as good. And um, I don't think there was anything else I was going to film, but I don't know like when they will be up considering, you know, all the things I'll be doing now. The cake, it won't be up until after Christmas because it has to sit for three days and if you want to see the end result how moist it is in the middle when we cut it you're going to have to wait till after Christmas <laughs> so that will be an Easter cake we always had always had it for Easter at Mama's always every Easter that was our um, one of our desserts I won't say that was the dessert that was one of many her desserts she had one of those chest freezers that was I mean way not one of them little little ones one of them huge chest freezers and she had it in there in, in the kitchen up against the wall and then she had a little small one sitting right beside it she had a, a plywood piece of plywood she kept out in the um shed in the back she would bring it in just for our dinners she would put it on that she would she had them that she would put over her sink and her stove when she got everything cooked she would put them pieces of board she had them cut just right she would put tablecloths on them and that's where all the food oh my gosh it looked like a reunion up in there for for the family but that whole freezer section was nothing but desserts. That's it. That woman worked herself silly to put these dinners on for us. She puts me to shame. She puts me to shame. Of course, we don't have as many people as she had. But, yeah, that was our um, Easter dessert. Now, let me tell you, um, Thursday and Friday, what I ate. So, Thursday, that was party day. I had... 54 of 25 points, 1,654 calories, and 160 total carbs, 142 net carbs. So because of the party I went over, for breakfast was my millet, and um, I had a half ounce of pecans in it. Pardon me. Lunch, I had, um, this was... Um, the party, two slices of the um, thin crust cheese, that's all it was, medium. I had one of my salads, but I only ate a few bites of it. I just wasn't in the mood, and then I had one piece of the chocolate chip cookie. That's where um, all the points come from. That was like, um, the chocolate chip cookie was like 14 points, and I don't know how many of um, the calories and carbs that was, but you know what? It was maybe boy's fourth birthday. Then for a snack, I had a, a slice of David's Deli Deluxe Cheese and um, two tablespoons of peanut butter. And for supper, I had a um, hamburger patty, a hamburger steak, whatever. I wasn't going to have any meat that day, but then since I've changed, I'm like, oh, I need my meat. I need meat. It, it, and it was 93%. I had it in the freezer. And a third a cup of navy beans, some of that um, Trader Joe's multigrain blend, which turned out to be really good. David don't like peas. He won't sit down and eat green peas, sugar peas, whatever. He won't sit down and eat them, but he, he can take them if they're in something, that, if there's not, you know, tons of them. But this was kind of like the multigrain with, uh, it seemed like it might have been barley and spelt and different colors of rice. And then kind of like a mixed vegetable, like I think maybe little cubes of carrot and peas and corn I think it was it had some kind of flavor on it we, we really couldn't put our finger on it but it was good and he liked it so he, he wants that again and it's the multi-grain multi-grain something in the freezer section and then just um, a little bit of that purple sweet potato I didn't like it it was too um, 
starchy or thick or too um, firm. I, it was cooked till it was soft, but it was very thick, and I just didn't like it. The flavor wasn't too bad. It wasn't as sweet as a regular old sweet potato like we grow here in North Carolina. But David said it was okay, you know, by him. And I'm like, uh, I won't buy that again. So the purple sweet potato was a, a no-go for me. Then that was Thursday. Then Friday, I had 34. This was yesterday of my 25 points. And I'm not, I'm on the purple plan. And I'm not, obviously you can tell, I'm not um, worrying as much about the points as maybe say the calories and or the carb now for yesterday the calories were 1397 and the carbs were 60 with 53 net carbs that's higher than when i lost weight when i started low carb because that was i was pretty much eating no carbs and now that i'm adding in whole grains and potatoes for potassium um and sweet potatoes for potassium those are adding carbs in but those are good carbs so i'm thinking where before i was losing weight on 30 ish or less carbs i'm thinking a hundred or less now is going to be uh good for me that that i've not been on the scale to find out but in my mind we'll see as we go but yesterday i didn't have much to eat at all i was busy i had um errands to run, pick up my groceries. I had to go to the grocery store for some groceries they didn't have. Had to go to the Dollar Tree. Swore I was not going until after Christmas to wait and see the spring stuff, but there happened to be like three things I needed, and the Dollar Tree was just the best place to get them. Well, I'll tell you what, it was not the place to be yesterday. It was a madhouse. It was crazy. Crazy. And you know what um, was funny? They had one of those um, rolling things stacked high full of boxes of Christmas stuff because you can see the label on the end. So they're not through putting out Christmas stuff for the, the last wave of people that come in last minute to do their um, Christmas shopping. So if, if you wanted something from the DT and you didn't get it, you may still have time because mine is still putting stuff out. <laughs> so anyway, I had one more This is, um, I had one more millet for um to eat and that little refrigerator in there sometimes if you push it to the back it freezes well that millet had froze i thought it out in the microwave but it did not translate well so if you make millet ahead of time do not try to freeze it because it does not freeze well it didn't mash together good it didn't stay together good it was not good and i had cooked up three apples that I had left that were going bad. I cooked them up on the stove to put in it, and I put it in there. I got it all mixed up, so I had to just toss the whole, I just, like, maybe two bites, I tossed the whole thing. Apples and all, because they were mixed in. So we ended up having three boiled eggs. And then, um, out, while I was out and about, I knew before I went to the actual grocery store, I had better get me something to eat. So when I was in the Dollar Tree, I picked up one of them little one-ounce bags of beef jerky and a um, watermelon propel. So I ate that before I went to the store, which saved me because I just got pretty much what I needed and a couple extra things that, well, no impulse buys. It was just things that I did need. Um, and then I come home and I had a can of tuna. And it was a can of tuna in the oil. I'll just tell you that right now. It was not the fancy olive oil. It was just the whatever kind that, that it's in at it, Aldi's. But sometimes I get just, I don't want that kind in the water. I just don't. So I counted the points for it. And um, I'm not even worried about it. Then, between then and supper, I was hungry. So I had a spoonful of peanut butter. And then for supper last night, I had a piece of meatloaf the size of my head. And some potatoes. <laughs> Still, the carbs and calories lined up. So, I thought I did pretty good. But that is my um, last two days of eating. Now, I'm just going to give you a real quick something that was been on my mind. And I'm going to try. I'm going to seriously try not to cry. Because this is not a um, you feel sorry for me segment of my video. That is 100,010%. <laughs> That's a number. <laughs> not the purpose of this portion of the video this is i just want to tell you that during this christmas season if you're not okay that is okay 
We are pushed to think it is Christmas and by God, you better be happy about it and you better be joyful and you better be bouncing around and playing in the snow and making snow angels and making hot chocolate and making Christmas cookies and, and holly jolly out buying presents and wrapping them up and just, no, it's not like that for everybody. There are things in our lives that are going on irregardless of what the calendar says. Our body, our things that happen in life doesn't know what the calendar says. Doesn't know, okay, December 24th, Christmas Eve, you better be geared up for the next day and you better be all happy and, and sunshine and roses. Life doesn't work out that way. It does not come out in a nice, neat little bow, which is uh, ironic. We're talking about Christmas and <laughs> presents. That's not life. Life does not... Hold on. You can hear my washing machine in the background. That's what that clicking is. Life does not give us smooth roads it, during the, the whole, however long we have it, however long we're on this earth, we are not guaranteed smooth roads. And you know what? Sometimes those bump in the roads come at Christmas. They say Christmas, December is one of the biggest months and times of the year for depression. We have lost loved ones. I have lost a loved one. I'm going to miss her. This is our first Christmas without her. Some of y'all have lost loved ones. This is your first Christmas. And you don't know exactly how to deal with that. Guess what? Maybe you lost somebody 25 years ago and you're still not dealing with it. It's okay. It is okay to feel the way you feel. If you feel like sitting in the corner and crying, then you do it. It, it, it is on you to determine what you need to do for your mental health. If you don't feel like celebrating and putting on your Christmas PJs and throwing a Christmas movie in the TV, don't do it. You don't, sometimes they say fake it till you make it. I can get on board with that sometimes. Sometimes you, you, you could just jump in there. Maybe you can put in a, a Christmas movie and get yourself in a good mood because I can get in my car and turn on my music and get myself in a better mood. I can go to the DT and Wanda's and I can get myself in a better mood. Yeah, it's going to come back, but for that moment, it's going to help. So yeah, maybe you can for that moment put in some Christmas music or wrap some presents or, or go mill around the crowds. Oh, trust me, the crowds <laughs> at the store and lift your spirits. What I'm telling you is don't feel forced into it because you think that is what you have to do. Now, I'll say when my kids were little, you do whatever you have to do. It, I'll do it now. I'll do it now. There's something about children that will bring up the best in you as far as putting your best face forward. Something about children will do that. But you know what? Sometimes you're not even capable of that. And it's okay. I just want you to know, no matter health problems, financial problems, losing loved ones. Hold on. I need a Kleenex. <laughs> It doesn't even have to be what I call situational. I see a psychiatrist. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I, I'm an advocate for mental health. If you need um, assistance in your mental health, then you better go get it. Now, I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not missing no meat about that. You go get the help and you don't worry about the stigmatism behind it because screw that. <laughs> Plain and simple. It does not matter. You come first. I have situational depression a lot of times me and him will talk about it a, a lot of it is chemical and i take medicine for that but then then it is it, exaggerated by situations if you have mental health issues that are not situational that are just chemical imbalances that is going to stop you sometimes from getting into the spirit of the season and that is okay what not okay let me make this clear. What is not okay is for you to think about self-harm. 
That is off the table. That is, if you get to that point, to me, that is the most desperate place a person can get. The, the most desperate place. If you get to a point to where it is too much for you, you do not think you can handle it, please reach out. If you, if you gotta reach out to me, I ain't no medical professional, but I'll talk to you. I just don't want anybody out there getting to the point to where they think that, that they can't handle any more of it because yes, you can. I'm just going to tell you, yes, you can, but you handle it any other way you can think to handle it. Crying, shopping, coloring, get, get you a notebook and a piece of paper. And I don't care if you sit there and scribble like Sebastian and just, just do like that. Get it out. It, it sounds stupid, but I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> just, I, I have, um, aggression, aggression, uh, um, that I need to get out. I'm trying to figure out how to say it. I get, um, I know it's hard for y'all to understand. I get angry. I have, um, issues with that. And so I have, uh, ag aggression. That's the word. I have aggression that I have to get out sometimes. Um, that's part of the, Put your best face forward. Um, that, that's like my superpower. <laughs> the kids tell me, we, we, we pick about um, everybody has a superpower. And they say, my superpower is, what's your superpower? Because I forget everything. <laughs> that's what they <laughs> My superpower is putting on the face that everything is okay when you don't know what's going on behind me. And I, I've learned to do that for my family for the most part. Now, I still wear my emotions on my sleeve. They see that. I don't hide, you know, everything from them. But if you have that superpower, use it. If you don't have that superpower, guess what? It's okay. I know I am rambling and probably not making a lick of sense. I just want you to know that if you're not okay, it's okay. You'll get through, and you'll get through the way you need to get through. And I'm not even crying for me right now. I'm crying for you because I know there's so many hurt people. And this time of year brings out the hurt. And I just, I don't want that for you, but I want you to know that you don't have to, you don't have to put on no show if you don't want to put on no show. And the people that love you, will understand. And if they don't understand, you send them to me and I'll make them understand. <laughs> I'll give them the finger. <laughs> so, I just want you to know I'm not, um, oh, I'm not eliciting um, sad sack. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. That, that's not what this is about. I just want you to know that and it happens, and it's okay, and I love you, and I will see you before Christmas, and I'm probably going to weigh in um, Wednesday, because I'm not going to do anything Christmas Eve, no, <laughs> I will be way too busy, so, all right, well, that is it, that is it for today, and, oh, you may or may not see some cooking videos, you might see them all after Christmas, Who, listen, come Saturday, you might see 14 videos, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But between now and then, and if you don't, if you don't watch me again, then I will tell you Merry Christmas. You might not get to um, check in on Wednesday on way in. You might not get to see that. You might not even want to see that. You might not care. That's okay too. <laughs> I don't mind. So just take care of yourself. Talk to somebody if it gets to that point. And if it does not get to that point, then just. Grieve if you need to grieve, mourn if you need to mourn, be sad if you need to be sad, and that's all. I love y'all. <laughs> Bye.